Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise, and welcome back to From the Depths Weird and Wonderful. So as ever, there's plenty of weird and wonderful things out there uh, on the Steam Workshop, in Discord, and just floating around the internet to do with From the Depths, but this caught my eye recently. This is the TG fan build, or Twin Guard fan build, uh, by Sebastian Nuera Huet. I think that's how it's said. Apologies if I mis mispronounced that. But anyway, this thing is lovely. I love seeing fan builds uh, of neater affections uh, that people do. Like, even if they never get accepted to the campaign, it's fine. It's, it is great fun to copy the style and the theme of a faction just in neater or, well, anywhere, really. Um, and coming up with custom factions, I can happily attest is great fun, but this is a Twin Guard one, because the Twin Guard have recently gotten a major, well they're still being uh, updated aesthetically, look at that little face. But anyway, so this is something, uh, what the hell was it called, I think it's the, used to be called the Seraphim, it might be called something else now, let's see where it is, it might be, let's see where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it? I don't remember, but um, yeah, like, this is one of them uh, sub-vehicle arranged around a mothership job, and it's very good. It's not overpowered, it is definitely a capital ship uh, killer, like uh, a frontsider in that sense, uh, because it's got... Well, let's show you the main body. Uh, this is very much, uh, seems to be the meta for frontsiders these days, it's just a whole bunch of heavy armor wedges, pointing forward, doubling as uh, kinetic damage re uh, reduction and free air gaps. Well, not free air gaps, I guess volume free air gaps. This is definitely not free, this is expensive. But yeah, so uh, it's uh, the front of it is very tanky uh, as a result of all this heavy armor. It's got beautiful little eyes, and it's got a whole bunch of custom jets. Well, what is this? Oh yeah, it's just uh, these are little custom jets here and there. Let's shrink uh, the blocks away. So you've got custom jets in the front, you got even bigger custom jets down there. What is this? Oh, I forget it. I always forget about these things. Um, but anyway, so it's a... Uh, I believe this is controlled via breadboard. I'll have to double check. But yeah, so it's got a whole bunch of, uh, of wonderful stuff. Just pointing forward and back. Just very front side like honking big steam engine in the middle here to power all the... I'm not sure what exactly that powers. I think it... Ah, yeah, it definitely powers the ring shields. Let's actually have a look at uh, the armor... Uh, armor here. Let's see if we can... Uh, let's see. Let's go armor tool. So, armor class boosted from uh, 35 to 44.7, which is actually a pretty significant uh, increase. And once that, that alloy is blown off... Uh, these wedges also get that armor boost instead. Actually, let's see here. Okay, the boost is... Wow, AC of 72, because it's stacking with itself. Damn, no wonder heavy armor wedges are so good. But anyway, it is, uh, this thing is just a big lump of armor, designed to take a beating in the face. That looks really cool. Nice rubber, nice rubber AI compartment, uh, with heavy beams, uh, surrounding it. Lots of surge protectors. We've got jets back here. I love the fact that these, uh, what are these jets controlling? Let's remind myself. So this is your pitch and roll. That's actually quite cunning, actually. Um, on these, uh, basically these things are mounted on spin blocks that are rotated just a little bit. And that just looks really cool. I'm not smart enough to copy it. And it's got these propellers here, I think mainly for decoration more than anything else. Even though they do have full power, so they do help, uh, with the craft, we've got a rotor there, that's hypnotizing. And we've got a rotor down there, which is also hypnotizing. A little twin guard symbol. And the sub-objects is where this gets interesting. So if you look at the AI names here, or the blueprint names rather, so you've got the main targeting core, you've got Protector A Cutie. They are cuties, look at this. So this is just a little heavy armor slash shield brick uh, that uh, just acts as a shield, and it gets repaired by repair tentacles, and it's just, uh, just very nice. I'm not sure why it has an engine. I think, uh, there might be decoys in here. Let's see. What's this? Shield drives. Okay, good, good, good. 
Let's shrink the blocks entirely. Okay, so there's a coincidence range finder, so I can find stuff. Why does it have an electric engine? I'm confused. Oh no, it's for the shield. Durr. That looks so. <laughs> that looks so funny. Look at that. Look at the, look at that little face. Look at it. Look at it. And a little spinny thing on top. So nice. So these things are essentially just shields that are right in here flanking, covering this thing's flanks actually, because uh, armor is slightly thinner on the sides, allows the bow to be pointy. I love how this is shaped actually. Oh, and you can do this! You can hide laser warners like just one block below the deck. I just need to start doing that. That's clever. I like that. Makes them a little bit less vulnerable. And then here we've got little uh, missile interceptor drones. Uh, that's just, well, it's just stuff full of mi missile interceptors. I do like missile interceptors uh, these days. They're not controlled by Seawiz. Um, uh, I guess they just really don't need to be. Uh, but yeah, they work perfectly well, fine. Uh, let's see, where's the stack of fire on there? So, 0 0.05 delay, so it spits it out nice and rapidly. And just got enough ammo for that, so that's very nice. Little self contained little drone. And then we get to the crushers, which, as per their name, do indeed fire AP heat. These are just honking big railguns. Uh, the rate of fire is not great, but the shells are very, very strong. So. Let's see here. Is the ammo customizer available on here, or are we being new and trendy? It looks like we're being new and trendy. So, here is the shell, 380 millimeters, lots of rail draw, and it is basically uh, armor-piercing heat, so AP heat. Emergency ejection defuse, the stats are down there. Really strong heat penetration metric, lots of kinetic damage, 40 armor pierce, which means doesn't do full damage to stacked metal, but you know what? Uh, almost 21,000 kinetic damage will go very deep into most things, so that's very nice. And I believe, hang on, I forgot to check this. I believe these are semi, uh, I think these are fuseless penetrators. They are fuseless penetrators, but by which I mean they don't have a pen depth fuse. I pretty much never use pen depth fuses uh, anymore, um, just because there doesn't seem to be much point really. Aside from specific shells. Anyway, uh, it's got an emergency ejection do fuse, which does count as a fuse, but not in the sense of a fuse of penetrator. So, this thing is quite strong. It, um, I don't have anything in the same material cost as this that can uh, take it on and win. It is actually quite cheap for what it can do. It's uh, only about 500,000 materials, and it can quite comfortably take on things like the tier. And the Megalodon sometimes wins against the Megalodon. It takes a while, mind you, but uh, it can do it. And also, I forgot about this little drone here. Uh, I, I need to double check those shells again because I forgot to look. But yeah, this is just a sonar drone. That's literally all it is. Uh, it does tend to get, like, blown up by torpedoes a lot, but um, this is an interesting idea. It's just if you have a flying thing, um, it just, and you just want to have proper sonar in the water and you don't want to use uh, sonar buoys, uh, something like this is a good idea. So this is quite clever. I like this. And let's spawn in a tier. Uh, just to... Uh, excuse me. And what is it? Nope. Turn off the monitors. Let's spawn in a tier just to, just to watch this thing work. Oh, I should be looking at the AI settings as well. So this thing does not have a lambs, it doesn't have lasers at all actually. It does backpedal quite fast. And you can see here that uh, the shield drones are actually going to take a fair- Yep, there you go, they're like... They are tanking those shots quite nicely. And the fact that they've got a little extended shields out there is quite kind of cunning actually. It means you can circumvent the power requirements for shields a little bit. Yeah. Let's see here. How are you doing? Not great. Uh, it takes a while for those guns to uh, actually permanently, like, you know, disable anything. But uh, once they get in there... Let's see here. You're not going to let me down on camera, are ya? Let's see here. What did that do? You appear to be making a mess of things. Maybe you're not meant to start that close. But the great thing about uh, 
about this guy is that he actually stays flying for a long time. I didn't have an actually tested it against the tier. Maybe I should have done that. Oh well. Let's see if you win. Uh, while we're while these two are having at it, let's look at the AI. What is just point and maintain distance? Very specific distance. Okay, no, we're fine. And let's see, adjustments is over there. Maneuver is just hover. Okay. So the you know, there's not incredibly fancy work happening here. I want to actually see was there bread? Was there bread? There was bread! Alright, wow, not the bread I thought it was. So Alright, so this is something I don't actually understand, but I don't, yeah, I don't understand that at all, but for those of you who know bread, presumably you will be able to understand it. How's the tier to, oh, hello, the tier's taken a, it's taken a few serious shots. Has it lost a turret? It has not. Oh, well, it basically has. Yeah, like, r railgun heat is just strong as hell, man. So this is very much an attrition uh, style of frontsider. It's just uh, takes a royal beating and just bit by bit it just like you know flings um, flings railgun shells at you and uh, just kills you bit by bit. Let's see what else is the tier doing. The tier is not uh, before anyone asks. The tier has been updated again. I think it is definitely better than it was. It's not quite uh, up to its old standard, uh, like back the vintage tier back in the day, uh, because the vintage tier was actually kind of broken because it was relying on uh, game on th like you know quirks of the game, game mechanics that are either don't exist anymore or are like just nerfed into the ground. So there is that. She is gorgeous though. Wait, no, focus. We're focusing on this fan build. Things at 85% health and still fighting because of this huge slab of armor just in the front here. Whee! My money's on the uh, on the twin guard thing. Mostly because I'm seeing like really important bits uh, fly out there. This thing does have weaknesses, by the way. The lack of a lambs. Uh, means that like big APS shells can kill it and it's not very good uh, at getting shot at from above or below as you might expect so wait a minute nope tier is not AI dead yet and missiles can get through uh, the interceptor volley so that is a thing also I do want to just see here so this is completely uh, beyond the bounds of what I usually do Let's see how you do against uh, things trying to swarm you, so... What is... Let's go and just spawn in a bunch of planes. So, Predator X. Let's spawn in three of them. How you doing, girl? Well, winged one of them. In fact, whoopsie-daisy. Yet yeah, one of them has already been downed, but that's alright. So it's just usual front side of, never mind. <laughs> Those railguns do just fine at shooting planes as it happens. Admittedly, three, uh, three Falcon X's is like probably not enough to deal with this. It's like, it is interesting how this happened. You th think of stuff like this as like artillery, it's like there's no way that'll be good against small nippy aircraft, and then it turns out, uh, yes it will actually. It will... Uh, make an absolute mess of them. Well, I am wrong. I'm glad. Also, uh, this thing, uh, when it spawns, so, ah, jeez, I actually want to turn the UI back on, so pull all, and pull in. There is, I think it's an ACB, uh, that triggers smoke immediately, and I'm seeing this more and more often. I actually saw it on the Event Horizon the other day, and I think, let's go find the thing that does that. I think it's an ACB. B. Nope, that is... There's heat decoys there. Nope, nope, nope. Aha, activate at start will really... I should get something like this for when I'm fighting the lightning hoods and stuff like that because the problem with smoke dispensers and laser warners is that... Uh, and I've found out the hard way uh, how this works is that lasers, um, because they hit instantly, um, 
like when you first spawn in, uh, there is a you know half a second window where a laser will just immediately gut you if it's strong enough and just bypass smoke. So uh, this is basically uh, the solution to that is just start with smoke spawned in. Let's see, let's spawn in uh, lightning hoods thing. How well would you do against? Let's spawn in a candela. Pardon for the noise outside, it is raining and my window is open because it is muggy. So let us see how you do here. Smoke is being smoke. And TG Fanwell has already lost 3% health, but that's probably fine. This thing does turn on a dime, which is very nice. Let's see how the candle does. Uh, probably not great. Because uh, I think the candle is the one where uh, it kind of had fo focuses on just having an alpha strike and uh, loses power over time. Oh, look at that. That thrust vectoring. That's probably breadboard. Do not worry. I'm learning breadboard. Soon your mysteries will not be a mystery to me anymore. Wait for it. Who's winning? Uh... As of that volley, I think uh, I think Twin Guard fan build thingy is gonna win. It's, there's a lot of good tricks in here, actually. Oh wow! Yep, that whoa! Yep, whoa! Two turrets at once. Uh, yep, they're, they're totally stealing ideas off this thing. And now, if only if it was canoe shaped. So yeah, I think we're getting the idea here is that th this thing is it's not the most formidable thing in the game. Uh, to read off. Um, well, to read off one of the comments that the author has uh, on the Steam Workshop, it doesn't use any exploits and is in fact following campaign rules. So this thing is actually existing under a handicap when it comes to fights and it's still doing very, very well, taking on stuff that's uh, bigger and more expensive than it. I mean, I would consider Subo decks to be, if not cheese, then like on the border of cheese, like yogurt, maybe. This is a yogurty build, but not cheesy. So yeah, I think, I say, very well done, uh, Sebastian, you are a hit. Wit? Ah, oh, damn, I, I don't know how to pronounce that, I'm so sorry. But, um, yeah, I love looking at this thing, I love fighting this thing, I like watching this thing work. It's very, very good. Everyone go play with us. So, on that note, thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Support me on Patreon or YouTube membership if you like. It really helps. And there's fun perks in it for you. Thank you to all my current supporters. And thank you to Sebastian for uploading this thing onto the Steam Workshop for us to enjoy. Farewell.